audience, as far as I can understand, we have a broad range of participants uh, from different uh, disciplines, just ge geologists, petroleum engineers, maybe economists, students and professionals. Uh, so with different backgrounds, different levels of knowledge on the topic, uh, I want to say today some of my slides will be simple for some of you, uh, some of them will be complex, uh, but I know all of us, including I, especially I, will get something at the end of the event. Uh, as Artem mentioned, uh, two sessions will follow my presentation, Q&A session and the uh, online reception. Unfortunately, it is not face-to-face -face nowadays. That we can discuss together. I'm, I'm looking forward to your questions. As Artem said, you can type your questions during my presentation or you can ask vocally at the end, but I am also eagerly waiting for your thoughts, ideas, uh, comments as well. I can view lots of uh, prominent professionals uh, as an attendee uh, coming from the oil industry. So I'm very happy to see a kind of discussion at the end instead of a, a you know, classic Q&A session. Um, let's start with some market definitions, physical market versus financial market. What do I mean by financial market? Yes, if there is a a physical exchange, there should be a financial transaction. But when we differentiate uh, markets into physical and financial, we are talking on something other than that. Uh, on the left side, you can view uh, the Tesla's factory in California, which is one of the world's most advanced automotive plants with 5.3 million square feet of uh, manufacturing. Uh, more than 10,000 employees are working in, in that factory, just in that factory. Uh, Tesla has some other factories in the US, uh, Berlin, Netherlands, UK. The second one is planning in the UK. But just in that factory, uh, 10,000 employees are working. Think about that. What for? For selling EVs on the physical market, on the physical car market. Uh, Daniel Ives calculated that. Tesla has made roughly $1 billion on, it is 1.5 billion Bitcoin investment. And I was noted that Tesla is on track to make more from its Bitcoin investment than profits from selling its EV cars in all over 2020. So just one month ago on January this year, UK regulator warned the investors and said that cryptocurrencies uh, is very dangerous and investors could lose all their money but as we can easily see from this example elon musk didn't listen uh uk regulator and he was lucky up until a few days ago i'm not sure whether tesla is still keeping the bitcoin uh or not but uh he didn't listen and he was lucky uh what he did think about the physical market lots of uh factories lots of employees on the other side, on the financial market, is the biography of the Elon Musk. He just wrote Bitcoin and it was like that. Of course, he invested $1.5 billion. On the other hand, think about the uh, transaction. Uh, we all know the GameStop story, Robin Hood, uh, Reddit story. Uh, here is the GameStop price uh, you can view on the right side of the screen. It has a similar path with lots of things in the world nowadays uh, going smooth and then some absent flows and then a big spike after 2020 we we can delay gamestop price uh, from the graph and uh, write anything else we are in a crazy world uh, we can write online conferences online webinars uh, the, the the graph will be same a smooth and then a big spike so uh, what what i would like to mention with this graph yeah, we are we are we are in a in a in an interesting time right now. What we have observed, especially in the last couple of months, on the financial markets, excessive money printing, uh, especially the U.S. dollars, which is expected to bring uh, inflation. Economy is too fragile in all over the world. High commodity prices, lots of records for commodities, and as we thought, uh, some new instruments in the financial markets, such as crowd manipulation, as we saw in the GameStop, and then in the silver market. Or we can call this as an energy in the financial system, financial markets, or 
think about cryptocurrencies uh, per se, it is an unregulated, enormous growing uh, market. Uh, this picture on the screen shows us the uh, volatility index, which is an indicator of fair. It's a kind of fair index. Uh, it measures how much volatility professional investors think the S&P index will experience over the upcoming 30 days. It's a kind of expectation. Yes, it's in a decreasing trend uh, in the last couple of months, but it has been more than 20 for around a year. So it has been uh, at high levels for a long time and it is still very high. Uh, on finance, standard deviation is the typical statistic used to measure vol volatility and volatility means risk in finance theories. And risk includes, of course, some opportunities especially if you are Warren Buffett. On the other side, uh, it, it has a possibility of uh, big losses, as, as you all know. Let's continue with an example from the oil industry uh, with the Bloomberg News last April. It is an historical date for the oil professionals uh, last April. Uh, we all know WTI future contracts uh, went below zero. It is estimated that Bank of China clients lost $1 billion due to a financial transaction. Uh, what kind of financial transaction? It was an automatic rollover of WTI future contracts. I don't want to go to the details now. We will talk about the future contracts later. But just for now, uh, Chinese clients had around 30 to 50,000 lots of WTI May contracts at the at the time of 20th of April, it, it is equal to 30 to 50 million barrels of oil. And they had to sell that contracts close to the expired date of the future contract. Uh, and they had to buy the WTI June contract. That was done automatically. And this is called as rollover. And the loss was $1 billion dollars. Uh, due to that oil collapse on April uh, 2020. Uh, in the meantime, the physical market of China was trying to enjoy the cheap oil prices. And experts were uh, trying to estimate the overall gain of China at the physical oil market due to, due to low oil prices. Uh, the inventory levels are not transparent in China, so um, how the experts estimate the gain, uh, we are looking at the you know, uh, cargo, uh, cargos and the tankers, oil, oil tanker movements, and the increase was around 200 million barrels in the first quarter of 2020. I uh, think about that, lots of invest, investments on uh, crude oil uh, in order to fill your storage, uh, storage facilities, moving the tankers, uh, lots of capital investment on the storage facilities, as well as lots of workers, why just to enjoy the uh, cheap oil. On the other side, the, the Chinese investors lost nearly all the gain in few minutes uh, in the financial market. Uh, this was an opposite example of uh, Elon Musk. Why the opposite? Because in this example, uh, Chinese uh, investors lost in the in the uh, financial market, whereas they, they had some gains on the physical market. Market. Uh, what we have observed in the last 10 months, loss of records, April 20, 2022, uh, April 20, uh, 2000, uh, 2020, record low oil price, as we all know, WTI feature contract went to minus $40 per barrel. It was the lowest trading price and the settlement price at the end of that day was minus $37.63 per barrel the lowest level recorded since the New York Mercantile Exchange began trading oil futures in 1983. Another record, April 29, 2020, record low of JKM spot LNG price, Japan Core marker, uh, which is the important uh, benchmark price for the LNG market uh, assessed by S&P Global Platts. It fell to a record low of 1.8 dollars per uh, MMB2. If you would like to convert it to oil units, you need to multiply this uh, by around six, which equals to around 10 
uh, dollars per barrel. Think about that. And at that time, uh, the, the drop means uh, that the JKM price was almost at parity with the Henry Hub price in the United States. Can you imagine that you liquefied that gas, transport with cryogenic uh, cargoes to uh, Japan, and the price was same with the Henry Hub price. Uh, and as I said, if you would like to convert it to uh, oil units, it is uh, $10 per uh, barrel. Uh, January 12, 2021, another record, but this time it is the high LNG price, highest LNG price. JKM spot LNG have risen to a record high level uh, of $32 uh, per MMBTU. Uh, again, if you would like to convert it to uh, oil units, uh, you have to multiply it by six, which means that $200 per barrel. This is the highest for the LNG benchmark for Asian spot LNG since it was launched in early 2009. Compare it with the prices 10, 10 months ago and try to understand the volatility uh, in the in the uh, gas market. Another, another record coming from this month, February 16, 2021. This time record high natural gas prices. Now we are talking about the pipeline prices and another uh, record prices at the mayor uh, Texas hubs uh, around four hundred dollars per MMBTU. Uh, we have lots of lots of other records, uh, not only uh, for the oil and gas sector, for, but for also the electricity sector. As you may know, uh, the the Texas electricity prices went to uh, nine thousand dollars per megawatt hour or nine uh, dollars per uh, kilowatt hour, which is the highest uh, as far as I know. Let's continue with the price uh, of oil. This is an interactive page and if it is possible, please try to concentrate more on the screen uh, for this page. Since I need your contribution in this slide, we will talk about price of oil now and price uh, of the oil in the future. Uh, I, uh, we, and we will forecast the price together for the future. And of course, by doing so, we will be familiar with uh, the finance terminology a little bit more. And here's the first question. What is the oil price right now? There are, there are uh, six uh, answers for that. $55 per barrel, uh, sorry, $45 per barrel, $53 per barrel, $63, $60, 66 or $100. $180 per barrel. Just think about for that uh, 10 seconds and estimate what is the oil price right now. Yes, most of you are right. I think all of you are right because I didn't define the oil price uh, very well, I just said oil price, and all of them are right. Why? Forty-five dollars per barrel. Well, had crude price at Canadian fields. Uh, on the other hand, the future contract uh, of WTI is the C uh, sixty-three point fifty-seven dollars per barrel. I viewed this uh, just one hour ago. There may be some change in 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 the last minutes, and. What's this, this price? This is the WTI future contract. This is not the spot price. This is the front month contract and the buyers and sellers uh, will uh, are, are agreed on the delivery or at Cushing, Oklahoma. And this is the free onboard price. And what about the others? B is the Dubai future contract, again, front month. Uh, the, the, the delivery will be next month. What about E? It is the brand future contract, front month, but this time there will not be any, any physical delivery, the cash settlement on the 1st March of 2021. So when, when we are talking about the oil price in the UK, yes, we mean brand future contract and we don't mean the, uh, the, the spot price generally, if, if you are watching the TV on uh, and you are watching BBC, if there is a news about the oil price, it is this one. Brand future contract, 
frontman. But if you are watching TV at, at, at the US, uh, mostly uh, they're, they're uh, referring to WTI uh, price. But two over third, three of the oil trading depends on brand future contract. And uh, this why this is the most uh, widely accepted for, for the, for the, for the uh, contracts. What about the others? 53.71 is the brand future contract, but this time the, the cash settlement will be on the first day of November 2024. So this is the M45. Uh, you can buy and sell, as you know, the brand contract up until 96 months on the IC, Intercontinental Exchange. So uh, the, the interesting point here is it is lower than the uh, M1, which is E, $66. So uh, we will call this uh, situation as backwardation. So the, the uh, future contract is lower than the nearer future contract. Generally, we will compare M1 and M2, and we will, we will see the uh, details in, in the upcoming slides. Uh, but but just for now, it is enough. It, there is a degradation in the market, so the future oil contracts are pricing lower than the nearer uh, future contracts. What about F one hundred eighty? This is the gasoline price. Uh, so if you are talking about the oil price in a consumer country such as Turkey, uh, and and in the, on on the news. If there is anything about the oil price, generally people are talking about the gasoline price. So all of them were correct, uh, the, the oil price. But as I said, uh, generally uh, when 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 we we say oil price, it is the brand future contract and front month, which is the E. What about the future? What is the expectation? Uh, what is your oil price forecast for mid twenty one? And now I need your voting. Uh, we have, and, and this time I define the oil price very well. It will be the dated brand crude oil, uh, not the future contract. I'm not talking about the future contract. And for summer 2021, what's your expectation? Uh, and, and I define the oil price this time as an average price of physical cargoes on July 1st, 2021. So I need your help for this expectation. Uh, there will be an online voting. Please click this uh, website. I think uh, Ali Ojam uh, Artem uh, will will copy and pass this to to the chat box, and or you can scan you can scan this uh, by your mobile and and go and. Uh... Ojam, we have posted the link, so we will wait. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you. If you can click on on the link uh, at the chat box, or or if you prefer uh, to to uh, to scan the uh, code, you can easily uh, vote for the for the oil prices. And I would like to share my screen for the results. expectation for the future of the oil price and it is still some generally it is still the most uh, accurate uh, way of uh, finding the oil price we will talk about oil price and forecasting the oil price uh, in, in in the upcoming slides but as i said uh, it is it is a, a, a good way to to estimate the oil price so so as far as i can view uh, the, the the mostly uh, given answer is between 65 to 75 dollars per barrel and the second one is a little bit bearish on the market a little bit decrease 55 to 65 as we showed the future contract prices nowadays it is 66 dollars uh, per barrel uh, on the on the brand and half of the attendees are you know uh, bullish on the market uh, i can say more more than half because uh, some of the attendees uh, think that uh, the, the price will be above 75 and yes as expected the the general uh, view is we are we are bullish on the on the oil market uh, similar to hedge funds uh, they are also 
turning to bullish on the uh, market nowadays. Uh, oil prices have already returned to pre-pandemic levels and oil demand recovery still under question. But some new trends uh, due to the pandemic are helping uh, to limit the damage caused in international travel. For example, electronic shopping uh, boom, uh, the plastic uh, packaging, uh, which is made by uh, oil products and uh, a fuel demand for trucks, freight is also increased. On the other side, some analysts, uh, one of them is my colleague in, in London, uh, Junaid Kozakolo, he states that there will be some lost demand due to an efficiency increase in the airline fleet after full re reopening. But as I said, uh, hedge funds are expecting higher prices in the summer. Uh, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, they are all bullish on the, on the market. One month ago, Goldman Sachs predicts the oil prices for summer as $65 per barrel uh, for this summer. And a few days ago, they updated their forecast after the Texas issue, they updated their forecast to $75 per barrel and JP Morgan uh, estimates 70. And according to Goldman Sachs, there are three reasons. The first reason is the vaccines, uh, they yes, slowly, but will have positive impacts uh, and as, as vaccines are rolled up, the, the demand will increase. The second reason of uh, Goldman Sachs is the government policies, especially because of the improvements on the income distribution. It will help to increase the demand, uh, supporting income supports the uh, commodity consumption. And as we know, US election is over with stimulus packets, uh, which is expected to boost the economy in the, in the short term. And as we mentioned with some risks due to uh, the inflation in the, in the upcoming uh, months. And according to uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, greener economy needs oil as well. And uh, that's why they are, they are bullish. And the third reason of Goldman Sachs is supply under investment. Uh, we all know that the exploration and production activities are highly related with uh, oil prices, plus uh, greener energy. Uh, some companies, especially ma majors are directing their investments to renewable energy, which triggers the underinvestment on the, on the supply side. And according to Goldman Sachs, the uh, velocity uh, could be a problem uh, to rebound. And uh, of course, uh, we have OPEC plus cuts uh, at the supply side, uh, a volunteer of 1 million uh, cut of Saudis. Uh, one, I, I read a news about that and uh, it was stated, defined as the uh, elephant in the room. I highly ex uh, agree on that. And we, we are all waiting for the march of uh, Ford uh, for the OPEC plus meeting, uh, whether the Saudis uh, voluntarily cut will, will continue or not, whether, the, uh, whether we will see the ease of cuts or not. I would like to talk about more about the oil price. And let's concentrate more on the oil price. Uh, here, here are the top, top factors that affect the price of oil. Supply, yes, we have main suppliers, OPEC, OPEC Plus, and, and especially after uh, losing the importance of OPEC and OPEC Plus, the non-OPEC countries, advances in the technology, uh, as we saw in the shale uh, boom or, or on the, on the uh, offshore drilling technologies, we, we can now drill at the water depth of 12,000 feet with the sixth generation uh, drill ships. So these are the, the factors that affect the supply side. And uh, another, another factor, of course, the weather, as we experienced at Houston uh, nowadays, and I believe we will discuss about the, uh, sorry, Texas issue uh, at the discussion uh, section and natural disasters. What about the demand factors? Economic growth, strength of the US dollar. If the US dollar is strong, it means that the, the oil price uh, will be uh, go down. Mobility transportation, uh, population growth, seasonal change, alternative resources and tax policies are the factors of the uh, demand side. What about the other side? 
what uh, of course these supply and demand will will affect first the inventories and then the oil prices but the interesting and the significant part of these commodities oil price has huge impacts on governments policymakers oil companies industry professionals investors traders consumers environment so economic ecosystem at every level every level so uh, that's why this is the fascinating part of the story and makes oil different than the other commodities uh, simple economics of supply and demand is not adequate to explain the oil price uh, because of this oil price effects uh, at every level from family budgets to corporate earnings uh, or the nation's GDP uh, and because of that do you think uh, that this strategic commodity uh, can we leave it to the Marcus invis invisible hand uh, in my humble view uh, we, we, I don't think so and that's why there's an interesting interplay of geopolitics derivatives and reports so we will talk about derivatives more uh, in the in the upcoming uh, slides uh, they have an interesting role and this is the uh, multi-directional way oil prices affects the geopolitics derivatives and reports and they are also affecting the oil prices let's continue with uh, some more information about the oil markets the oil market is bigger than all raw metal markets combined what do i mean by that here are some physical market uh, numbers for the platinum it is eight billion dollars per year uh, this, this is the this is for year uh, 2019 but it is roughly same for for a little bit less for 2020 and nearly same for 2021 and titanium 13 dollars per barrel lithium uh, three thousand uh, three billion uh, dollars per year so these are the physical raw metal markets what about the bigger ones nickel 27 uh, billion dollars per year zinc 49 billion dollars per year and bigger ones aluminium 165 billion uh, dollars per year uh, what else gold is the is the maximum one 170 uh, billion dollars per year on the other side oil market and i'm, I'm talking about the physical oil market uh, the, is is bigger than the total of all these raw metal markets and the, the the value of physical exchange in 2019 was 1.7 trillion dollars per year as i said it is less uh, than that in 2020 due to the low oil price but it is roughly same in 2021 uh, so so the, the the physical oil market is around three times of the total of the all metal uh, raw raw metal markets combined so it shows us the significance of oil and and as uh, remember the previous uh, slide we, we, we it's, it's not the simple uh, supply and demand uh, cannot explain the oil uh, prices because of this uh, strategic position and and this one was just the physical market uh, the the it, it comes from the 90 uh, million barrels per day physical production and uh, as i mentioned there is more than that uh, the daily production was around 90 million uh, barrels per day when i figured this graph on may 1st 2021 it's a little bit more than that nowadays but if you put this to to the left side of the screen we can say there's more than that the future contracts and we can call the physical transaction as uh, wet barrel and on the other side we will have a uh, paper barrel which uh, has uh, has a huge impact on on the derivatives uh, let's see what's the volume of that and let's compare the physical market and the, uh, and the financial market by this graph the daily volume of wti crude oil futures in NYMEX is around 1.2 billion barrels on that day on the, on the same day so what about the 
other uh, contracts in NYMEX, uh, as an example, the crude oil options contracts, uh, it is 130 million barrels. What about the IC, IC uh, sorry, Brent oil, but contracted in NYMEX. Uh, Brent can also contract it in NYMEX, so it is 91 million barrels uh, per, per, per day. And this is just the contracts on, on NYMEX. What about the I, uh, and, and there are some other products. What about the IC? Let's, let's, let's turn to the IC intercontinental exchange. The daily volume of brand features in IC is 700 million barrels. What about the uh, WTI features? WTI is mostly contracted in NYMEX. On the other hand, you can also buy and sell uh, WTI features in in the ICE, uh, it is 200 million barrels when I, I uh, take the numbers of, for May 1, 2020. Other, volume, other oil products in ICE, it is 600 million barrels. So this is the ICE numbers. And the gray zone is the daily volume of oil products in other exchanges and over the counter that we cannot uh, see the numbers in, in a transparent way and we cannot be sure about the numbers. On the other hand, we can easily estimate that the financial market of oil is 50 to 100 times more than the uh, times of the uh, physical oil market. So think about the previous page. We compare the raw metals, the physical raw metals, and we saw that the oil market was around three times of the total raw metals and now we can easily see that the, the financial markets of, of the the the, uh, the oil is around 50 to 100 times of the uh, phy physical uh, transactions which is called as paper barrel so we we use some jargons and uh, i would like to explain a little bit more these jargons in in this slide because it has some indicate it is an indication for 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 oil prices uh, such as contango and backwardation bullish and bearish as as you may know bullish means we we expect oil prices higher in the in the in the uh, future if we are bearish on the market it, it means that we we are expecting the uh, the, the uh, decrease on the market what about contango back variation i i i i use this jargons uh, during my my speech at the beginning back variation means a market condition in which futures prices are lower in the distant delivery months uh in this graph this is the price of oil contract and the, the red uh, dot is the dated brand, which is also can be called as spot price and average price of physical cargoes today at the North Sea. So we call this as spot price or dated brand uh, or SP. What about the future contracts? Uh, the, the buyers and sellers are buying every day, every, every moment, and the, the settlement will be for, for in, the, in the future, as I said, up, up to six, uh, 96 months. Uh, these are the future contract prices. And this is what we are observing nowadays. The future oil contracts are lower than the spot price. And it is in a decreasing trend. And in this situation, we call the market uh, in a backwardation position. And this is a kind of a bullish indicator for the oil markets. Uh, which means that we need oil now, uh, and that's why the, the spot price is high. So this this can be viewed as a as, as a bullish indicator for for oil prices. And we talked about the expectations, which is different than the future prices. Uh, I would like to put an expectation as an example here with the with the blue dot. It can be higher or lower than the future contracts. It it is not. The same meaning there, there there can be a confusion a, a, in this part it's not the same price as the as the future contract so so if the expectation for the future and this is the this is the thing that we are observing nowadays is higher than the future contracts it means that uh, we are in a normal backwardation position so yes the market is in backwardation and the expected price is higher than the future contracts, 
which means that it is a normal backwardation. And as I said, backwardation is an indicator for, for an increase uh, for a bullish market, uh, especially for oil. And, and the degree of uh, the, the uh, bullish, uh, sorry, backwardation is important. Uh, I wrote here the, the exact numbers. Roughly the spot price is 67.5 dollars per uh, barrel and the front month contract is around 66.93 dollars per uh, barrel whereas the uh, second uh, month M2 price is 66.8 dollars per barrel. Now it is. It is in a decreasing position and generally we calculate the uh, level of backwardation uh, first we we have to calculate the spread what's the difference between m1 and m2 so m1 minus m2 equals 0.85 and if it is plus of course it's the backwardation if it is minus we will see the contango position uh, but in in our example and we are observing in the oil industry nowadays we are in the in the backwardation position it is 0.85 uh, now, and and the level of backwardation is important because I said it is a bullish indicator. And how how can we calculate the level of backwardation? M1 minus M2 uh, to M1. So it is 1.27 uh, percent now. It is it is a high number, yeah. Uh, and and uh, and as I said, it is it's an an bullish indicator for oil prices. What about Contango? Uh, Contango, in, in Contango situation, a market, uh, the, the future prices are higher in the distant delivery months and the, the, uh, the future contract prices graph will be like this. Uh, and, and this is the SP as you can view on the, on the, uh, at the, at the time zero uh, the, with, the dead, with the red dots and the future contracts are in, a, in an increasing trend. Again, for the level of contango, we have to look at the M1 and M2 generally, and we, we have to look at the level of contango, whether it is a super contango, as we observed in April 2020, it was around five, six percent, uh, and it, it, we call this as a super in, uh, contango. And again, the expected price can be higher or lower than the future contracts. And, and if the expected price is higher than the future contracts, we call this as a normal backwardation. The market is in a contango position. The, the prices, the future prices are in, in an increasing trend. On the other hand, the expected prices are higher than the future uh, pr contract prices. So it is in a contango position. On the other hand, uh, the, the, we, we are observing a normal backwardation. So these are just uh, some, some jargons for the oil contracts. Uh, I would like to say something about the oil collapse in uh, April uh, 2020. What do I mean by oil collapse? Of course, the uh, prices that went to uh, zero territory, uh, below zero territory. So we all know the, the history, I will uh, be a little bit uh, speed up with, with this slide. We, we all know the what we happened in the first quarter of uh, 2020 due to uh, coronavirus pandemic and and on the April 20 we will focus on April 20 uh, 20 we had too much oil and the market was in a contango position um, everywhere filled with the, with the, with the oil and and uh, because of the current year of course and the oil collapse uh, raised raised fears of the collapse of the financial system. What we saw on the scene at that day, OPEC, OPEC plus with the leading of Russia, but also OPEC plus plus uh, G20 countries uh, try to rebalance the oil market uh, interestingly. And, and more interestingly, even OPEC plus 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 international A A energy agency uh, as, you, as you all know, uh, found to, to, for, for the consumer countries uh, uh, several years ago. On the other hand, uh, the, the, the unbalance on the oil market uh, caused a fear or, or, or of the collapse of the financial system. That's why all the actors in the, in the uh, oil industry 
uh, went together and uh, tried to rebalance the oil markets. And this is the picture of the uh, cuts of OPEC Plus at that day. Uh, it was roughly 9.7 uh, million barrels per day, which is very high. And just it was announced as, as 10 million barrels per day. And then Mexico, due to its uh, hedging obligations, didn't uh, contribute to that uh, cut and, and ended as 9.7. And interesting, uh, interesting declaration from that days, uh, the, the draft de declaration of OPEC plus plus was that we welcome the commitment of producers to stabilize energy markets. We call on other producing and consuming countries to complement these efforts. Think about that. In, in G20, uh, the OPEC plus plus countries, there are some consuming countries and even uh, their consuming countries, they would like to contribute to the, uh, to the, to the uh, commitment of uh, stabilization. Hopefully they change the, this draft uh, wording and then they, they uh, end with the uh, with these words, they, uh, we recognize the commitment of some producers to stabilize energy market. But these all shows us the strategic position of oil for the financial markets. Uh, so, so even for the consumer countries, sometimes. Uh, we will have some more slides in order to understand what has happened uh, during that time. Uh, but before that, I would like to tell something about the oil trading um, in in it's valid for all commodities. We can have hedgers, arbitragers, speculators. They are the legal traders on the oil market or illegal ones, uh, manipulators. Uh, these, are the, uh, these are the actors trading on the, on, on the oil. And, and let's have a look at an example uh, to understand better at that specific contract uh, for the oil collapse in, in uh, 2020. Um, in this example, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an example for hedgers. Uh, think about Shell and, and I assume the oil price was $60 per barrel on 15th of May, 2019. Uh, at that day, think about that. Shell would like to uh, sell its, its oil for for with with, with, a, with a contract and uh, in order to hedge its, its its production, so he's willing to sell the contract for seventy dollars per barrel, and he's okay to deliver the oil at the Cushing, Oklahoma, on May twenty twenty. Let's assume that Shell would like to sell one lot WTI which equals to 1,000 barrels of oil, and he is okay to uh, uh, deliver that oil after a year. Why Shell is hedging this uh, production? Of course, uh, that if the oil price in, uh, on, on May 2020, if the oil price will be higher than that, he will lose with this uh, uh, transaction. But it can be lower than that. That's why Shell would like to sell period to that date. And we need a buyer in all financial transactions. We, we need a seller and a buyer in order to complete the transaction. Let's assume that United Airlines, generally oil uh, producing companies and uh, airline companies are given as an example for hedging. Uh, that's why I also give this example. Think about that. United Airlines would like to hedge its position by buying oil contract for, a, a, for the delivery of May 2020 and he is willing to give $68 per barrel. Even the spot price on 15th of May to 2019, the spot price was $60 per barrel. United, State, United Airlines would like to uh, buy that oil for, for, for $68 dollars per barrel because it was a contango position as I mentioned uh, during the oil collapse days. So, but, but there isn't any transaction because the, the price are not matching. 
So we need another buyer. Let's assume that Turkish Airlines is okay to, to give $70 per barrel. Then the transaction is completed. They, they, they agreed on the price and the delivery will be on Oklahoma, uh, Cushing on May 2020 and Shell is selling its, its oil uh, for $70 uh, per barrel. Turkish Airlines is the buyer and buying oil for $70 per barrel. Uh, and, and on the NYMEX platform, we, we have lots of uh, contracts, future contracts, as, as you can view on, on this slide, up to 96 months. But uh, we, we have to write one contract, the seller is Shell, uh, and the buyer is Turkish Airlines, and the price for J, uh, CLK20 is $70 per barrel. And this contract was 12 month contract at the, at the date of the transaction that we, uh, we, we assumed. So what happens after that transaction? In new buyers and sellers, they can be hedgers, uh, arbitrators, speculators, or they can be, there can be some manipulators uh, are buying and selling that contract, that specific contract. Think about that, Turkish Airlines would change its mind and then uh, would like to sell that contract or or Shell is changing its, its mind. So each and every day, that contract price is changing. Let's assume that on May 2000, uh, and, oh, sorry, on, on, I cannot read it. Yeah, 16th of May, 2019, the price can drop to $69 per, then, uh, then, uh, then it can raise to $75 per barrel. And, and the, the, the uh, figure was similar to this for that uh, important uh, contract, which was called as CLK 2020 contract for, for WTI. It went to uh, negative uh, territory on the 12th of April, 2020, just before the day of the uh, uh, delivery uh, date. And it is the real uh, numbers that you can view, the real graph that uh, you can view uh, for the last three days of that contract price. As you can see, the trading volume uh, before the uh, settlement date was very low uh, when when the the price went to negative uh, territory, but but uh, you can see that the, it it raised to uh, more than uh, zero uh, towards the end of the expire date of the of the contract. So why this happened? Of course, the the stock levels at the Cushing was. Uh, full around 70% uh, of that level was full. The tanker prices were very high. When when there is a contango position, when the market is in a contango position, the tankers, the storage companies, the uh, the the, uh, the refinery countries uh, co companies, the, the, all the companies that they have a storage ability is gaining more in a contango position. And the, in the in the backwardation position that we are facing nowadays. They are, they are not uh, enjoying the, the market conditions because nobody would like to store the oil and, uh, and uh, their uh, revenues are, are decreasing. So this is the, 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 uh, the man on the right side is the owner of a refinery in, in the US who was enjoying the low uh, oil prices at, at that time. And the, the, the table on the NYMEX platform is completed with lots of uh, contracts uh, for, for the other future contracts, as you can view, uh, and in, in a contango position, the, the prices are higher uh, towards the uh, future contracts. Uh, I would like to end with with some some uh, some slides about the geopolitics of in significance of the geopolitics on on oil prices. We had a uh, study about the uh, Trump's tweets on that days. And I named this as a, a new paradigm uh, in the oil market, uh, Trump's tweet effect on oil prices. As I said, we, we saw that not only the producing countries, but also the consumers uh, try to uh, be together to rebalance the uh, oil, oil prices and Trump's tweets were 
were famous at that time. Uh, it was a kind of manipulation, actually, but but it raised uh, the oil prices uh, significantly, uh, and we observed it. In my last slide, I just would like to say that uh, forecasting oil price is very very difficult, uh, and and it's very dangerous. Uh, this is this is the oil price. Uh, till 2010 to, to, to today, uh, or, or I think I ended at March 2020, yeah, up to the COVID issue. As you can observe, the prices were around $100 per barrel to $130 per barrel between 2011 to 2012. And at that time, International Energy Agency looked at the oil prices. It was changing between, you know, 100 to 130 and it announced as the end of cheap oil, which was a, a tragic uh, announcement for the oil industry because, yeah, it went like that for a for, for few years, but they underestimate the, uh, some, some factors such as uh, oil uh, shale or gas shale uh, boom in the US, renewable uh, boom, and also the importance of geopolitics on oil prices. So, so I would like to end with my words, uh, with this graph, it is, it's the most difficult uh, thing that uh, to, to, to estimate oil prices. So I, I avoid to do that. Uh, instead of that, we all do it together. And, and as I can observe, we, we are a little bit bullish. Uh, most of us are bullish on the, on the oil market. So we are expecting a higher prices in the, in the uh, upcoming uh, months. But, but after COVID, nobody could say it is the end of uh, cheap oil uh, because, because, uh, because of these historical learnings. It's not easy to say uh, we cannot reach to $100 per barrel. We cannot reach to $100 per barrel. So it is, it is not easy to, to say end of, um, uh, end of uh, uh, expensive oil. So thank you very much for listening. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to your questions, but as I said at the beginning, I'm I'm eagerly waiting for to to listen your thoughts, ideas, comments. Uh, so that's that's all from my side.